today. So there are a few ways to activate this display. The first one would be just to flip your wrist towards you. That's gonna activate the display. You can also press this top side button here to activate the display, but you may want to tap to wake the display. To enable tap to wake, you're gonna swipe down and go into your settings, go into display, and then just scroll down here until you see touch screen to wake. Go ahead and enable that and now you can tap on the display to wake it. So now if you double tap, that's gonna wake up the screen without having to press the button or rotate your wrist. The next thing that you may want to do is go ahead and enable that always on display. So with the battery being a little bit larger on the Galaxy Watch 5 Pro, you're able to get three or more days of battery life. You can still manage two to two and a half days of battery life even with the always on display turned on. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and jump into our settings We'll go back down to display and then you'll see this option for always on display. I'm gonna go ahead and let it activate so you guys can see the difference here. So different watch faces will behave differently with the always on display. This specific watch face just kind of dims the display so it's not going to use as much battery life but you're basically getting the standard display with this watch face just with the uh, brightness dim. Now if I go with a different watch face here you can see that it does some unique things here. So with this watch face, not only does it dim the display, but now it's only highlighting the numbers for the clock and making the rest of the colors just kind of be blacked out, which is gonna save even more battery life. So you'll get some difference in battery life depending on the watch face, uh, but you still get all the information that you need, like your time, your steps, your date, that kind of stuff is still gonna be accessible from the always-on display. Like I had mentioned earlier, even with the always-on display, you're gonna get about two and a half to three days of battery life, or up to five days of battery life without the always-on display turned on. But there are some even better, more substantial battery life savings options. So if I wake this up and go into settings, and then we go down to battery, you have a few options here. So it says that I have four days and 21 hours of battery life left. I've had this off charge since 6.45 a.m. We're now at 3.08 p.m. and I've only used 85% of the battery. Uh, with always on display turned off, I usually get through the entire day, so 12 plus hours of use with uh, usually more than 85% battery life. So battery life has overall been good, but you do have some power savings options. If you turn on the standard power savings, that's gonna get you, from what they say, an additional day of battery life. This does a few things here. It turns off the wake up gesture, always on display, and Wi-Fi, it limits CPU use, decreases brightness by 10%, and limits background network usage, and a few other things there as well. And then they also have another option here, the watch only option. This says it gets up to 47 days of use at 85%, so you're gonna get up to 60 days of use if you have full battery with this watch only mode. Now, if we go into watch only mode, it is nothing but watch only. So it's just gonna tell you the time, but say you're going camping for a week or something like that, you can reactivate your watch when you wanna use it and then just go into watch only mode if you won't be near an outlet. So we'll go ahead and turn that on so you can see what it looks like. All right, there is my watch only mode. So literally just time, but you can have that for up to 60 days, which is a great option. There's another setting in the watch that you may want to be aware of and it can help to curb your electronic addiction. So it turns out that humans really love the color blue and they love vibrant colors and your phones and things like that. Studies show that having all the color on your devices can make you more prone to device and electronic addiction. So there is an option to curb that electronics addiction. It's called the grayscale option. We go into our settings here go down to accessibility, and then if we go into visibility enhancements, color correction, turn that on, and then we can go down here to where it says grayscale. All right, grayscale is gonna take away all the color from your watch, and if you turn this on, it can do a few things. It can help curb your electronic addiction. If you find yourself going to your watch and checking it constantly, it can help with that. It can also help with ADD, and it can also help with anyone who suffers from color blindness. Another great option with the Galaxy Watch 5 Pro. The next thing I wanted to show you guys is pretty awesome. You can actually use your watch as a remote control for the camera on your cell phone. So what you're gonna do, you're gonna grab an application. It's not installed on the watch um, out of the box here, but you're gonna wanna get this PPT control. So that's PowerPoint control. You can grab it on 
the Play Store. So just go to that Play Store app, search for PPT Control, and that's gonna give you this application here. Once you connect it to your phone, you've got a few options. Uh, you can use it as a touchpad. When I'm gonna open up the camera app, and I'm gonna bring a cursor. So you use this little touchpad here and it adds a cursor to your phone. This would be great for PowerPoint presentations. You can go from slide to slide. There's even an option to just go through the slides with that PPT control. Uh, but here you can use it to act as a remote control for your camera. All right, so I just started a recording there. Let's see here, if I go to the photo option here, I can drag my cursor over here and take a picture. So that's a really neat way that you can use your watch as a remote control for your camera. One thing you may notice on the Watch 5 Pro is that you're not receiving all your notifications. So you'll see that maybe you're missing your Gmail notifications, you may be missing Facebook Messenger notifications or Twitter notifications. Um, if that is the case, because some of those are not turned on by default, what you're gonna wanna do, you're gonna wanna jump into that Galaxy Wearables app and you're gonna go into the watch settings here and then scroll down to notifications and then you're gonna wanna go through your applications here and choose the ones that you want to notify you. So if you want your Instagram, YouTube, your Gmail notifications, go ahead and enable those because a lot of these are not enabled by default. You will miss those notifications. They will not show up on your wrist unless you jump into this application and enable them. Now that you have your notifications enabled, you can actually interact with them on your phone. Uh, there are some quick replies here. If there's something here that works as an actual reply, you can reply to your email. This will send out an email just by pushing a button there. Now you've sent an email right from your wrist. Watch faces are pretty simple, but there are a few things that I wanted to kind of explain. If you're not used to using a Galaxy watch, then there are a few extra things that you may not have known about. So we'll go into our watch faces in the Galaxy Wearables app. Okay, so there are several different watches to choose from. I've got my favorites up top here. I'll go ahead and swap over to this watch face. You've got this customized option. They're gonna give you plenty of pre-made colors. So you can swap the colors very easily. I'll swap to this blue and tan, click save. That's gonna show up now on my watch basically instantly. And then you can customize this further. So you have the clock font. You can change the clock font. On this one, you've got the complication color here. So right now it's got it as blue and tan. Maybe I want it one of these blues. I can swap it there. And then I can go in here and adjust the complications. So the complications are gonna be these little notifications down here like your weather, and then you've got your weather up top. So I'll go to complication one. That's got my steps. So that's going to be this complication. If I wanted to change that, I could go over here to uh, my stress levels and that's gonna change that complication to stress. So this one's got several different complications, a lot to customize here. I'm gonna put it back on steps. If I go to my complication two, that's gonna be my battery life. I could easily make that my reminders or my con uh, calendar, or if I wanted to set it up as the media control. And you guys see there's just plenty of different options here that you can customize these complications. You can actually wirelessly charge your Galaxy Watch 5 Pro with your Galaxy Z Fold 4, your Galaxy S22 Ultra. Most modern Samsung phones have that feature, but some other Android phones have the feature as well. So to enable it on the Galaxy Z Fold 4, I'm gonna swipe down my uh, notification panel here, and I've got several different quick toggles. I've got mine turned on here. Now, because of the case, I'm not actually gonna be able to use the power sharing because the S Pen blocks the power sharing. Essentially, you would just place your smartwatch on the back of your phone and then it's going to begin to trickle charge your smartwatch. I believe on the Z Fold 5 it's at 5 watts which is pretty slow but at least you can get more battery life on your watch if you have battery on your phone and you can try and kind of transfer that over to your watch. Next up we have a really awesome feature here if you ever have issues misplacing your phone you can actually find it by using the find my phone feature on the Galaxy Watch 5 Pro. I'm gonna swipe up my applications. You're looking for this little square with a magnifying glass. Go ahead and click that and then hit start. That's gonna cause your phone to ring. And you'll be able to hear that and then you can go and find it. 
Uh, the other thing that's really cool is you can do the same thing on your phone to find your watch. So within the application, if you click find, it's gonna give you the address of where the watch was last found. You can navigate there, so it'll actually give you directions in Google Maps, or you can select ring, and then it's gonna start playing sound on your watch. This watch also has advanced fall detection and SOS alerts. So if we go back into our settings, you will need to go ahead and turn on these two options. There's, hall, there's hard fall detection, you can turn that on. When the watch detects a fall, it can notify your emergency contacts. Okay, and then you have the SOS with home key. If you turn that on, if you press the home key three times, it'll notify the contacts that you have selected. If for any reason you need to take a screenshot of your Galaxy watch face, you're just gonna take and press both side buttons at the same time, and that's gonna take a screenshot. It's then going to send it over to your phone where you can then open it in the gallery and edit it. So if we open it up in the gallery here, now you can edit this and share it. Uh, what this would be great for is if you spent all day at Disney World and you have like 40,000 steps and you wanna share with the world that you've walked 20 miles for the day, you can take a screenshot and share it from your phone. Earlier we had talked about the complications uh, in the watch face of so the step counter, the battery life, all of those things that are customizable those are also ongoing shortcuts. So not only do you get the information on your watch face, but if you press them, that's gonna bring up the application and then you can dive in and get more information on the different things here on your watch face. You may not have known that you can also use your watch to control the music playback. So if I launch YouTube music here and I play Teen Spirit, now I've got this little music symbol at the bottom of my watch. If I click that, that gives me controls on the watch face so I can play pause, I can mute, unmute, go forward, go backwards, and you can use the rotating bezel to turn up and down the volume. You can also use the watch to control your YouTube application. Where this really comes in handy is if you're going to be casting this to another screen, you don't have to use your phone to control the YouTube app. So if I play this video that Greggles put out the other day, or just a few minutes ago actually, and I click on this little music button. There again, I've got my controls for YouTube. And it also gives me a little countdown of the play there as well. I think that's pretty cool. Something that I didn't notice before. All right, and once again, we can turn up and down the volume. Also wanted to show you real quickly the quick launch feature here. So if we go into this advanced features mode and we go down into quick launch, there's several applications that you can launch just by making a fist and then flicking your wrist down and back up. So you're gonna be able to control, let's see here, uh, open recents, open workout type list, turn on the flashlight or add a reminder, and then there's all different kinds of applications that you can launch quickly just by making that um, up and down motion with your wrist.